like a puzzle. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. If you've been keeping up, you know those two, James and Lisa. It is our third and final day here in the Dry Tortugas, but we are working our way home as the day goes, so we have to load everything this morning. Kind of like a puzzle piece. Try and get it all back in here. Um, the last two days we've mainly been doing some photography and we did a little bit of spearfishing, but today is more geared towards spearfishing. Um, didn't want to have the fish sitting on ice for three days before we got them home, even to fillet them and freeze them. So figured we'd do it on the way back. Beautiful conditions. It's been like this for three days. Unbelievable. But we are getting loaded. We'll see you out there. Spot. Man, there is a ton of life here. I don't know if the camera picks them up. Yellowtails and chubs and horse side jacks. Woo! All kinds of stuff. Welcome back underwater, everybody. As always, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I may sound a little funny. I'm actually, I've been under the weather the last few days. I'm a little congested, but all is well. So this is our first spot. A little curious shark came in. Uh, the sand, I want to say the sand was about 60 feet. The top of the rocks came up to, I think, close to 50. Uh, this was our third and final day of our three-day camping trip. If you haven't seen the other two videos, I'll link them at the end or in the description or something. You can go check out the other two. This is our very first drop, or my very first drop. I typically don't get down in the ledges on my first drop. I just kind of do a flyover, stay high, see if anybody's out and about, get a feel for the area, what's going on. You can see some off in the distance. I could see some dog snappers. Cruising around, just kind of checking everything out. moved in. There's some big dog snappers. This is realistically probably drop number 12. I did a ton of drops. Didn't pull the trigger on anything. We were seeing some fish here and there. We were just kind of waiting it out, seeing what else would show up. Um spot had a ton of life. I did see one big grouper off in the distance earlier, uh, a dive previous, but um, it was so far out, couldn't locate it, kind of lost track of where it went. You can see a little black grouper here, kind of shifts out, and there's a dog snapper just above them, and they both zip down into this hole, and I'm not going to chase them um, just yet. I want to kind of get a feel of what's going on. You can see me kind of sizing up the area, and I have a feeling that those two holes are connected. Um, and the three of us had been kind of watching them, me, James, and Lisa, trying to get a feel of where they were going and how they would be set up in there. So they live in that cave right there. There's two dogs on a block in there. So if anyone wants to try, or I'm going to stick my head in there and shoot the first thing I see. What was it? I thought you were on your way up. Was 
Is it a dog or a black? Dog. Did you hit him? Yeah. Oh, James. So if you couldn't hear that whole conversation, um, James did a drop in that cave, saw one of the dog snappers uh, that came out the other side when he was on his way up. I missed the whole, the, the front of the clip. Um, he took a shot on it and it tore out, but uh, it was one of the smaller ones. So it went back in the hole, kind of started everything up. So we gave it about five minutes just to let it clear. And I figured I'd do a drop with the light and um, see if there was anybody left in there. So light in one hand, gun in the other. I'm not familiar with this spot, so I don't really know which one's which. I, I normally would lead with the light and the gun at the same time, and I have a feeling because I didn't see anything in the front, that's what I'm gonna do. You see leading together. And uh, the second I come around that corner, that dog snapper's sitting right there, and I do not hesitate. Try to line it up right in the head, and uh, fortunately, I got me a stone shot. You can see some nice yellow jacks come in there. Um, these dog snappers don't normally get this big around this area. I have a few spots where we see them this big. I think the biggest we've ever put in the boat was maybe is either 17 or 19 pounds. I can't remember. Um, this one was probably flirting with 15, but just a beautiful fish. Always a treat to get a big one of these. There's some big yellow jacks down there. And as always, I, I bleed every fish that I harvest, no matter how big or small. Um, if you're new to the channel, I think it increases meat quality. Normally I brain first and then bleed. Uh, this shot fortunately brained the fish the second I shot it. You can just see the colors on it. Just what a beautiful creature. So grateful. And if you haven't seen the past two episodes of this camping trip, uh, my good friend James and Lisa are with us. Uh, James is a world-renowned photographer. A lot of the stuff he does is underwater, and uh, he took a pretty awesome picture here of this fish. Uh, and he has a ton of prints for sale. Um, I'm a, again, I'll attach his email and his Instagram in the description if you're interested in getting anything. He does amazing work. I think that's the one, because like, at like one 12. dive I saw him like kind of sitting out in the open and he was like just kind of swimming like this in the middle of like a depression. And he looked big and I was like, oh, what's that? But it was already on my way Yeah. So this is a dog snapper. I shoot these behind Key West. You guys see it all the time. They normally are not this big. This is a dry tortuga dog snapper. Unbelievable fish there. Beautiful. I'm pretty sure James got a pretty cool photo of it too. Out of curiosity, he's probably 12. I gutted it. All right, so I should, should say she, she was full of row. Thir 13 and a half gutted. Wow. It's like a 27 pound fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke. 13 and a half gutted. Wow. I will take it. On to the next. On the next spot, we had <clears throat> been in the water. I had just hopped in the water. I, was, I hadn't even started my breathe up yet. And uh, James and Lisa found a real nice, another nice hogfish. And uh, I missed the shot, but this is the retrieval dive. Sand is, I think, 65, so James is probably around 55 right here. Water was a bit better this day. Um, we had been in and out of visibility, and we definitely saw some better water this day. And again, I normally don't uh, take hogfish on charters. I don't take them around Key West, but in the area that we're in, we're quite a ways from Key West. There's a few spots where we see some big ones and a lot of them, so I don't mind taking a few. I 
I've had a few of you ask for uh, species identification on other fish that we don't shoot. Those fish you always see on top, uh, the round kind of gray ones, those are called Bermuda chubs. Um, I'll try to identify some here and there, but typically because we're spearfishing, I'm not paying much attention to some of the other species. But if you look closely, bottom left of the screen, you'll see a little flicker, plunk, uh, and then kind of swims up towards the top right. That was a yellow jack. When I slowed it down, you can kind of see it, but that yellow jack ate something like in the blink of an eye, like that. It was either maybe a grunt or a yellowtail. That was pretty wild. I've never seen that in person. Um, and yellow jacks don't have very big a teeth. Um, more like sandpaper, so they either have to, I guess, kind of knock them out with force and eat them or just get them down in one gulp. But, again, all these fish you see on the bottom that I'm not spearing, the gray ones that kind of follow me up here, those are called Bermuda chubs. And from my understanding, I have not found anyone who can find any type of food value from them. That yellow jack ate something right in front of me, and I couldn't tell what it was. It was so fast, he just ate the whole fish. And something else that's highly requested, um, and I promise I'll get to him, is... Uh, a lot of be like beginner vids for spearfishing, how-to gear. Um, I'm going to try and stockpile a bunch of those and kind of do a dump of them, and I'll put them all in a playlist for you guys. Just bear with me. Um, it's been very, very busy lately, but in the near future, I should have a lot more free time coming up. So hopping around, um, just doing like kind of half-drop scanning. Really hard to search at this depth in these caves, and you can see off in the distance... It's a little shallow shadow that scurries up under that ledge. And I can tell, it's hard to tell with the camera, I can tell that it's a very nice black grouper. So I'm coming up, trying to keep an eye on the area to see if it stays in the area that it swam under or if it continues on, comes out. I just want to try and keep an eye on it because that was a very healthy fish. So I'm back on the surface trying to calm myself down a little bit. And you'll catch me looking at my watch quite a bit. and. That, the reason being, it gives me a lot of information that I need. Um, and I'll pause the clip here. You can see my surface time is probably my most important. That's how long I've been on the surface, breathing up since my last dive. Bottom right is my di my last dive time, which was a minute four, and my last dive depth, which was 45 feet. So that's why I always glance at my watch. And I'm just trying to calm myself down. One of the hardest dives you can make in spearfishing is to either retrieve a fish that you've already shot or to make a dive on a fish that you know is there and you're excited about. Obviously, big fish, your heart rate gets elevated, you get excited. That's natural. So you want to do your best to calm yourself down. I know it can be difficult. Um, I've been doing it long enough that I'm pretty good at it. Uh, I can stay calm in relatively high-stress situations. So I'm doing my best just to remain calm. And I want to, because I'm right-handed, my gun is in my right hand, I want this ledge, when I approach it, to be on my left. If I am left-handed and I approach it with the ledge on my left, uh, it's going to be kind of wonky. You're not going to have as good of an angle. So if you're left-handed, the ledge needs to be on your right. If you're right-handed, the ledge needs to be on your left, if that makes sense. So coming down, ledge is on my left, gun's in my right hand, flashlight's in my left hand, and I come around this corner. I'm expecting to see the fish somewhere, just not sure where. And right here, you can see the light comes on. I'm going to zoom in. You'll see the fish's face. A black grouper like this I know is going to spook if I give it more than a couple seconds. So I do my best to line up as quick as I can in a comfortable shot that I know is going to hold, and I just let it fly. Uh, luckily, I hit this fish perfectly in the head. I didn't stone it, but it's a good holding shot. I, it happened very early in my dive. I'm at about 60, 65 feet, I think. Um, happened very early in my dive, so I am able to fight this fish and get him out of the ledge. Uh, it actually kind of kicks me up a little bit, which was kind of wild. I haven't done that before. Um, typically, a fish like that, if you leave it down there, it's going to bend that shaft, wrap that line around a hundred times, and you're going to have yourself a mess. So very grateful um, to even be able to harvest this fish, but to do it in one dive was more than ideal, and uh, I couldn't be more pumped about it. Just a, a, an awesome fish. I found him. Brain and bleed as always. And you may notice I always grab fish by the, the neck or in the gills. Uh, and I actually grabbed this one while I was on the bottom. It can be really hard to hang on to a fish like this. So as long as you're, you know you can get the fish out, you don't want to stick your hand in a fish's gills that's still stuck. But um, 
the best way to control a fish or, or get a hold of it, that way it can't get away, is in my opinion, is grab it in that neck area or the throat or the gills. Um, there's nowhere really else on the fish you can grab a hold of other than maybe sticking your hand in its mouth, which I'm not a fan of, um, that you can really control the fish. Once you have control of that fish's head, um, it's not going anywhere. And here's another awesome photo from James of this grouper. So cool to have him out there to be able to remember these moments with photos like that. Um, and as I mentioned, James sells prints. Uh, if honestly, he may, like if you're looking for a photographer to hop on one of your spearfishing trips, say you're running over to the Bahamas, he lives up in South Florida. Um, maybe shoot him an email. He may be up for that as well. That's a healthy one. He's over 20. I thought he was, I thought he was about 20. He's probably 25, 23. Is that a shark? Is that a shark behind you? Yeah, definitely. You know, so long we'll have his head like you that. saw him the first time? I saw him running away. <laughs> Healthy. Hi, Healthy black soul. grouper. How deep were you when you shot him? Was you like... I was on this. I was in the sand. You were down low. Yeah, on my way to this. For the people back home, sometimes they like this stuff. So I did gut it. Oh, that was way off. How much? 28 gutted. Nice! Damn. Yeah. It's bigger than I thought. There's a healthy one. That's sick. We will take it. 28, wow. We hit a couple more spots um, with no fish on them and uh, kept working our way back and ran probably, I think it was like 15, 18 miles and we ran into this area, <laughs> just crystal clear water. We hadn't seen water this clear the entire trip and um, it was just a real treat. Looked like the Bahamas. It makes the, the GoPro turn really blue when it's this blue i need to needed to mess with the white balance a little bit but i was already in the water and the camera was in the housing but i think i've done enough talking i'll let you guys enjoy these last few clips and stay tuned if you like um seeing some cooking we made a pretty awesome recipe at the end of this using that black grouper
am pooped. These snappers look so much smaller underwater. I thought they were like 14, 15 inches. I think almost 19. Really nice ones. Some nice ones to end it on. We're done out here. Can't, couldn't ask for better, better weather. This is the best, unfortunately, the best viz we've seen the entire trip, but I have no complaints. That was magical to see. Had a great time regardless. The amount of cool photos and videos we got on this a trip I will truly never forget. Um, but the work is not done. We've got a lot of unloading to do, cleaning, and all of that. So I'll see you back at the dock. We've got a little bit of a run. Um, we'll get this. I think I'm going to do something with that grouper head and the carcass. I'll send James and Lee's home with the fillets. I think I'm going to keep the scraps. We'll do something with that when we get back. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so we have our grupa, which is gonna, gonna be what I'm cooking. I'm actually gonna give the fillets to James and Lisa, and I'm gonna take everything that is left. So let's dive in. All right, so this is what we'll be using for our dish. So I'm just gonna break this down. Ooh. My shot actually broke the spine. I didn't realize that until right now. You see, that's the spinal cord. All I did was flip that over and it came right off. Went right through the head, right here. Straight down. It's wild. All right, so we'll be utilizing this. Lots of good stuff left on here. Depends how soon you're gonna cook it. If, it, uh, if it's gonna be a day or two. Try and pull these little bloodline sections out because it'll kind of run into the rest of the meat. We'll actually be doing it tomorrow, but I'll just show you. You can just clean it up. Pretty easy. So that's pretty much ready as it is. All right, so remove the collar. It's actually like a little plate or a hinge right here. A couple ways to do it. You can just kind of manhandle through it. Or if you actually get up underneath it, well, it's a bad demonstration. There you go. Up underneath it. Cut that way. And once you get past it, it opens up. Cut down. I like a serrated for all this. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Or collar or wings or throat depending on where you're from they call it different things It'll come out in the water so now I want to get the gills out and if you're smart you put a pair of gloves on for this I'm not gonna So these groupers, the reason the gills are so daunting is they have these little fingers right here. Hopefully you can see them. These little fingers, these little white fingers that stick up. And they have a bunch of tiny little barbs that stick like this, all stacked on top of each other around that finger. So if you go past it, it goes smooth. And if you come back this way, they're sharp and they stick. So if they eat a fish, it goes in easy. Or if it's trying to escape, it goes through easy, but it won't come back out the other way easy. It's an impressive little feature they have. All right, now that I broke a sweat, that is my head. Gonna use that for our stock and use the rest of these. Got the collar, the rack, or the carcass, our ribs, and this, we'll throw this. This is where the pin bones are. Get a lot of fat out of there. Throw that in the stock as well. Lots of good meat left on there. I will see you in the kitchen. Alrighty, 
time in the kitchen. We're gonna make some grouper head soup. Well, grouper soup, we're using all the parts except for the fillets. I was gonna try something new, but Madeline insisted that I do the old sweet potato and collard green recipe, but I'm gonna do something a little different and last time we did fillets, this time I'm actually gonna use the ribs and I'm gonna sear them real hard till they almost have like a crunch on them and we'll put that on top of the soup. So right now I'm kind of prepping all the meat um, I'm getting or all the, the leftovers. Um, perfect timing. Um, the head, and I'm using this is the pin bone section that was that I cut out of the fillet. So we're going to use that in the broth. Right now I'm making the broth. The broth will take about an hour or so. Um, so I've got our grouper head from from yesterday. You saw me fillet. Um, just pretty much whole. Took the gills out and obviously removed the rest of it. I'm leaving the cheeks and everything in there. I'm going to use this as well. In this pot I have coming up, um, I'm probably gonna end up doing two cans of coconut milk just because this head's a little bigger and we can make a big big batch of broth that I can reuse. Um, if you have the time or the resources to get fresh coconut milk, it makes the world of a difference. Um, today's my only day off, so I'm gonna use canned coconut milk, uh, which is probably what most of you will be using anyway, so not a big deal. So I'll walk you through it. I've got a grouper head. Again, and those pin bone cuts. And just, if you're using a smaller fish head or smaller carcasses, just scale this down a little bit. I'm using two cans of coconut milk. And then I'm refilling these up, uh, the cans, with water and putting them right back in. So two cans of coconut milk and then two cans of water. A bit of minced garlic. Some ground ginger. You just kind of eyeball that. All right, so I'm going to bring that up to a boil, and then turn it down to a simmer once it gets to a boil. And we'll probably let, excuse me, we'll probably let that head go for about an hour. We'll look, we'll check it in an hour. Um, this is our rack or our carcass. So I'm gonna actually bake this and pull all the meat off of it and throw this back in the soup as well. So we'll just do olive oil, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. This is a pretty big one. A lot of times this is gonna be a small, you're gonna be doing this with something smaller. So it won't take nearly as long. This one I'm gonna put in the oven Honestly, I'm gonna eyeball it just when I see that it's start that it just started to cook. I'll give it two or three minutes, and then just enough that way I can pull it off the pull it off the bones easily. All right, so that's going in the oven at 350. Like I said, just keeping an eye on it, just enough that I can get that meat off of the rack. So there's our ribs. Normally, that goes back in the water. You see, that's pretty much all meat. There's big big bones in there, but they're easy. When the bones are bigger, they're easy to pick out. I'm gonna slice these down between the bones. I'll bring it a little closer to me. You can you can feel them very easily if you run your fingers across it. So I'm just trying to go. Let me come down at an angle, you can see. Bone runs all the way down. And some of this is just belly meat, but a little tougher it stays on there pretty good sometimes you get a little off track you gotta power through it there you go you can see i mean this is what would normally go in the water and after all we do harvest we enjoy harvesting but you do harvest to eat this stuff why not get a couple extra meals out of it? Saves you money, and they are delicious. So there's our ribs. I'm just gonna keep those cool until this broth is done. And once we're ready to, um, once we get a few more steps done, we've gotta cook down the sweet potatoes and the collard greens. We'll get these seared up in the pan and I'll show you here in a bit. All right, so that looks right. Like I said, I'm not trying to 
over the top cook it, just get it white enough and cooked enough that I can pull it off the bone. So that looks good. So just do this nice and slow to make sure I don't pull any of the bones with it. I mean, you can see that's big, nice chunks of meat left on there. I got a little sloppy around the tailpiece here, so there's extra. And you guys normally probably see me do this on the smaller snappers, but as you can see, if you've got a place to cook it or break it down, if it's too big, don't have an oven or a grill big enough, break it down into sections. The more I eat this, the more I swear the, the meat around the bones is the best part. And there you are. I can get a little more in there, but I won't show you all that. But that's the gist of it. You can see quite a bit of meat. Worth saving, in my opinion. So, we're, excuse me, we're going to set that aside. And we're going to add that in here in a bit. Come over here. <laughs> I'll show you a little secret. So we've got a little bit of time left, but I left those cheeks in there. Oh, that is a grouper cheek right there. We're gonna try and remove this safely. Wow. Is that my piece? That is a hunk of just pure buttery grouper meat. Well, you know what you need. All right, Doctor. I got you, babe. Oh. Get a little of that on there. Oh. A little sous okay. chef taste test. Mm. The cheeks are kind of like the filet mignon. Just blow on it a sec. How's the broth? Oh my god. How's the broth? Whoa. Delicious. Delicious. All right. So I'm actually gonna move this over a little because it's. Pretty cooked through, but I want to break it apart. I think that's frowned upon when it comes to stock making, but I want to break it apart so it gets a lot of this stuff down in there too. Pulls all the fats out of it. Hold that for just a sec. Mm. It's like a light broth, but super flavorful. Oh my gosh, it's like heaven. <laughs> okay, actually that's perfect. So just kind of lay him flat, just like that. Mm. I'm cooking all the flavor out of those bones, out of all those little pockets. That's what we want. Hold on, babe. There's two cheeks. Should we get I the know, other I, one? That's going to be tough. We'll, we'll get it on the way out. Mm. We're going to get oh, just a little taster. You can see the fats in there. All right, quick break. Back on. We'll see you in about 30. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to strain all this out. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Just try to make sure you save the broth. Take all the scales and bones. And I'm actually going to do this a little different than I normally do. But long story short, run it through a strainer. This is a really thick, well, loose strainer. I'm going to use this guy to pull all the big stuff out. Then I'm going to run it again through this fine mesh one to get all the little scales and whatnot. You can see all the little scales and particles it picks up quite a bit. I'm going to start adding everything back into the pot. I already strained this once. I like to strain it a couple times. I'm just paranoid like that. Um, and last time I added the sweet potatoes probably about 10 minutes before the collard greens and I feel like they were way overcooked compared to them. So I'm going to put them in the same time this time. Um, sweet potatoes down. I'm going to bring that back up to a boil and then down to a simmer one more time. And 
and these collard greens will cook way down. I think I forgot a step, if I remember correctly. I think I soaked the collard greens last time, but that's okay. Recipes are more like guidelines, not rules. I'm gonna pour this on top just so it gets a little bit on everybody. We'll cover that and just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, I'll let you know how long it takes. All right, so this is finishing up. I have to turn the heat off and I'm just gonna let it, let it cook itself. I'll let the potatoes finish themselves. I'm gonna add the rest of that grouper meat from our rack. Just a little more flavor. A little more protein. Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell it. Can you see me? Yeah. Am I in here? Oh, you're in there, lady. Oh, hello. Let's behave. I don't so know a little, little bit of, yeah. A little bit of garlic salt. And then a little Sazon Caliente. Just something with a little bit of heat. We're gonna make these a little spicy. Nothing over the top, but with that coconut and that broth is like kind of a cool, refreshing flavor. The heat and that I think will go well. And we like spicy everything. So probably like a medium heat, but I, I'll let that get away from me. Just make our ribs. Oh, just, just olive oil in the pan. Just keep an eye on them. Oh, perfect. Little brown crunch there on the side. Ooh, falling apart. I'm gonna have three. You said you wanted a fork. No, I need a spoon. Wow. There's bones in the meat, so I would. It's gonna to be towards the piece that's not. Well, yours are kind of broken. Towards the piece that's not curled. So it's one big bone. Well, what am I trying first? The soup? Whatever. Or... Get in there. Okay. One big rib bone. Oh, that's hot. Look at that. Like that's rib meat. Yeah. Wow. I like oh, a little bit of the, the crisp. I know you like your crispies. Mm. Is that meat? That was not a good tap. Napkin tear. Here, I'll give you that one. <laughs> what did you mm. The The fish with the broth. It's like a little warm Ooh. ball of happiness. The ribs are crispy. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's like home. Homey. Yeah. It is very homey. Yeah. Let's see if I undercooked the collard greens. My second time ever cooking. Ooh. Not bad. They use a couple more minutes, but <clears throat> they'll, very they'll good. They'll steep whenever they're. This, there. like the combination of the coconut. And the fats from that fish is just, I can't even describe it. You just have to try it. I like the ribs as a little bonus, that little crunch. Yeah. I like that you did it, you kind of crisp them up. Mm -mm. Good job, baby. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you can, excuse me, you can just see the fat the top of the broth. We did this one probably like six months ago. You got to try it. That's so good. One of my favorites, for sure. And like I said, the more, the longer it sits in there, the better it gets. Um, the ribs are a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah, the, mm. the collard greens could be cooked like a smidge more. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You can, yeah. you can send it back. <laughs> I'm gonna leave a review. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, they'll, they'll soften whenever you yeah, I'm just leaving the lid on. They'll cook themselves. But that is all we have. Um, mm. 
what a long, this is the day after our three day Tortuga trip, so I'm a little tired, but I'm kind of confused. I don't even know what episode this is. Um, but that is all we have. As always, any questions, please leave them in the comments. I do appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you on the Negative next one. ones, keep them to yourself. <laughs> if you know, if you have any what is, concerns, what if you have any concerns, keep them to yourself. Toodles. See you later. <laughs>